Party Mode. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, great to be with you this evening. This is Bill Brannick, uh, Director of Technology out of OCE. Thanks for joining us and a happy belated new year to everyone. Uh, we are looking forward to a, uh, a great evening this evening. Uh, once again, as we uh, come back for the new year for our Connected Educators webinar series. Just as a reminder, as you see in the bottom right hand corner, whether it is throughout our webinar this evening, uh, during the week or on the weekends, don't hesitate to join in on the conversation um, to be able to share best practices, tips, and resources um, throughout our various social media uh, accounts and platforms by using the hashtag AOPTech. Uh, joining us once again this evening are our co-hosts, um, our EdTech coaches, uh, Alyssa DeVito and Aaron Hines. I am grateful for all of their preparation and work in preparing us for, for this um, webinar this evening. Alyssa, Aaron, how are you? Hi, everyone. I'm doing well. Uh, glad to see so many of you here joining us tonight. Thanks for being here. Yes, I'm really uh, excited. And just to echo what Alyssa said, this is a phenomenal turnout, so thank you. It really gives a lot of uh, support for our work, so thank you. Excellent. And looking at uh, our agenda this evening, uh, we will begin as we do all good things. Uh, if we would be able to join uh, with where we are in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And this evening, I would ask that you remember uh, in your prayers um, the repose of the soul of, uh, of one of our team members in the Office of Catholic Education and in the Technology Department, uh, Mr. John Boris, who was uh, with the Archdiocese for uh, 25 years. Um, he passed away suddenly over this past weekend. And um, we certainly remember the repose of his soul and his family in our prayers this evening. We fly to you, your patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O ever glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John Newman, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just as a reminder that uh, our webinar will be archived this evening, and it will be posted publicly on our YouTube channel, which you can find searching AOP Tech. Um, as we go through the webinar this evening, there will be opportunities to be able to um, ask questions both privately and publicly. You ask those questions privately through um, through the, the chat window, which is on your floating pane on the right-hand side on your control panel. Uh, Alyssa and Aaron will be monitoring that chat window for any questions that may be coming in. And at the appropriate time, when there are times for Q&A, uh, Alyssa and Aaron may, Aaron may highlight a few questions that were brought up in the chat window uh, for the benefit of all of our attendees this evening. As well, when we get to our Q&A sessions, you'll have an opportunity to be able to ask questions publicly. Uh, what will happen is that uh, on your control panel, over on the left-hand side at the bottom, there is a little floating hand. You can press that to be able to raise your hand. Um, either myself, Alyssa, or Aaron will identify you by name. Uh, we'll come over, we will give you control of the microphone, and you'll have an opportunity uh, to be able to engage with our presenter. Uh, also, as a reminder, this is our first webinar where we're uh, offering Act 48 credit. Um, so our webinar this evening will be 90 minutes long, um, and for those who are who registered for Act 48 credit, just a reminder um, that there will be the survey that will be um, populated automatically from Courseware uh, shortly after the webinar's conclusion uh, for you to be able to provide feedback on. Uh, as a reminder, however, if you if you did register for Act 48 credit, that to be able to receive the credit. You must register for both the January and February webinars and attend both webinars. Attendance at the webinar is determined by what GoToWebinar calls as attentiveness. Uh, and attentiveness is very simply um, keeping the tab or the window that you are watching uh, the webinar on in your browser as the main window. And what it does is that it looks at how often you have that as your main window and it records the attentiveness throughout the entire webinar. So if during the webinar you happen to get an email or you're looking something up, just be aware that as you go to um, either a different tab or even may change over to a different browser, 
um, that pauses the attentiveness to the webinar. Since we don't have the ability to receive hard signatures for our webinars, that's the way that we turn in um, our attendance to Sister Edward in the Office of Catholic Education. And as always, if you have any questions after the webinar uh, or before any of our future webinars, uh, don't hesitate to be able to email myself, myself, Alyssa, or Aaron. As we got that cleaned up and out of the way, uh, I'm certainly thrilled once again to be able to introduce uh, a man who at this point in the Archdiocese I think needs little introduction, but uh, Gene Carboni, who's um, one of our good friends in the technology department, a, um, a department chair at Father Judge, and a Google certified educator and Google certified instructor. And as always, you can connect with Gene um, outside of the webinars and outside of school on Twitter at G Carboni. And a very special uh, well wishes to Gene and his wife, Elaine, who are celebrating their 42nd we uh, wedding anniversary today. And Gene, um, your wife is a saint for allowing you to spend time with us this evening. Um, I'm sure she is, uh, she is sitting next to you holding your hand as you're going through this webinar. But at this time, I, uh, I do want to hand everything off to Jean um, for our webinar this evening. So Jean, I'm going I'm to flip things over to you. Okay, thank you, Bill. Thanks for the, thanks for the well wishes. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I, had, um, I was hoping that Elaine would have joined us this evening. So like I said, we could have spent some quality. Uh, so uh, I thank you for I thank everybody for being here. This is a great great turnout. You guys, the, the, the elementary uh, always have a, a great session, and uh, the numbers that turn out are phenomenal. So uh, hopefully we will be able to go through this evening. Um, I will get a chance to answer uh, some of your questions within the presentation, and then um, we will take a look at and spend some time where you will be able to ask questions maybe that I didn't hit. Usually, uh, I will start, as I've done, um, and as Bill and Alyssa and Aaron know, I've been reviewing uh, your your registrations uh, as they come in so that I could stay on top of the questions to try to hit whatever questions we have within the time uh, allotted and if by chance you have anything at the end please uh, feel free to uh, email me uh, contact me use Twitter at, at G Carboni and I will uh, be more than happy to uh, you know to get back to you and answer whatever questions you may have but I think uh, we will hit a good bit this evening uh, within the hour and a half that we have and uh, anything that we again anything that we don't hit there is always tomorrow, and you can always uh, reach out to me, and I'll be more than happy to uh, work along with you. So uh, to start, I have the um, – I'm going to just pull this out of the way here for me. And the, the presentation link and I, uh, is here, and I believe that Alyssa will be – if she hasn't already thrown it up in the, in the chat, it will be there for you. Uh, this will give you access to the slides. Uh, that we're going to go through this evening. Please uh, feel free uh, to take this file. Uh, you can save the, you know, save the link and always come back, or you can save the file itself and use it with your groups and at your school if you ever, uh, if you're going to take what we're doing this evening and then do a presentation with your, uh, with your class, uh, your te teachers at your location. Please feel free to take it, tweak it. The only uh, thing that I do ask is if you tweak it to make it uh, and you're making it better, please. Let let me know uh, and send me a copy of the changes that you're making so that I too can uh, have a better presentation the next time around. I learn uh, from you uh, just as much as you guys are going to learn from, from us this evening. So please uh, get back to us if you have any, if you do have something and you've, you've changed it to, to make it a little, um, a, a, maybe it's a, a little easier to understand or you, know, you highlight things that are grade specific, please let me know so that when I'm doing something that is grade specific, I too will be able to include your work and I will give you credit uh, within the presentation when I do it. Okay. So that is the link there. It's a Google URL. I'm using the Google, Google URL shortener. Uh, so it's goo.gl. This is a capital a slash capital V capital W nine capital P lowercase v six, and you, that will get you the copy of the presentation. Now we are looking at Google Classroom as um, as being a tool for us to. Uh, Get the information out to our students. We're not looking at it as something 
thing that we're going to use with our uh, as communication with our parents uh, so much right now as it is for communication and uh, collaboration with our students. Although we had did get the Guardian piece that was added to Google Classroom uh, last year, and I will try to go through and recap some of the changes that came about uh, in uh, 2016, so that uh, those of you that are are new, you you'll see exactly to where it came from, uh, where and it's it is two and a half years old now, and uh, there have been major improvements to Google Classroom. When it first came out, I wasn't I wasn't all hepped up about it. I was a, a staunch uh, Schoology user. I had coming off of Edmodo, moving to Schoology, and uh, when it came out, I, I didn't see it as, as something that I, I really was going to be able to use at the time, and then uh, it kept getting better. And it keeps getting better because of what uh, you, as the teachers, are the feedback that you're giving Google. In the uh, lower left-hand corner of the Google products, you will see a feedback button. It looks like a question mark. Uh, if you click on that question mark, you can give Google feedback, give it suggestions, and that's pretty much where the changes within their products come from. So uh, the changes and the the new changes also that came out last week that I want to go over this evening, uh, which the secondary group didn't get because they they hadn't even been pushed out yet. Um, these come about through teachers using the product and making suggestions about what they would like to see in the in the tools themselves. Just want to make sure I have everything I need here. Okay, good. So now, this may be you. Okay. And uh, if you're if you're shaking your head and you're saying yes and you know you say or if it's not you you know somebody like that in your in your school that you, when you go in their room that you go into their office or classroom you can't even find the pencil you can't see the desk uh, part of the monitor is is, uh, is covered we need to get you uh, as teachers uh, away from this. And Google Classroom is a good way to do that. Google Classroom is a good way for us to help clear up the clutter, to help us uh, streamline our workflow. I am very big on um, improving our workflow so that we are able to, to use tools that will give teachers back the one thing that we value the most and have the least amount of, and that's time. So uh, using Google Classroom can help us uh, get back some of that time uh, what you do with it is entirely up to you. You may use it to create lessons. You may use it to walk the dog. You may use it to spend time with your family. That is entirely up to you. My role is to try to help you get to the point where you get this time, get some of this time back. So, what do you, what do we need to get started with Google Classroom? With Google, any of uh, Google. Google for Classroom, any of the Google products that we're using as part of the G Suite for Education. The G Suite for Education is is the new label now. Uh, it was Google Apps for Education, and in order to uh, broaden the scope of of uh, of the uh, the suite and and the tools that are available, they 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 rebranded a G Suite for Education. And uh, in doing so, it encompasses everything. It encompasses all of the Google products: uh, Drive, Docs, Sheets, uh, Drawings, Maps, Earth, uh, YouTube. Uh, you name it; it pretty much falls into the G Suite for into the G Suite for Education bundle. And it it, it does. It's what's nice about it is everything plays together. So we're not looking at. Uh, getting tools that are not going to be able to talk to each other, that uh, we lose something in the translation or we lose something in our copying and pasting. Uh, pr pretty much everything works seamlessly amongst the different products and tools. So what do you need to get started? What, what we need is a school-issued uh, G Suite for Education account. And what I saw in, and if I want to jump over here for a second, I'm going to take a look at the responses that we have. These are coming from the, the answers to your, your registration questions. And it says here that we're looking at 63% of our, our schools uh, being uh, G Suite schools. A uh, little over 1% are for teachers only. And we have 10 or close to 11% that are not uh, G Suite schools. And then we have 25% who are just not sure. And that's perfectly fine. Okay, we may be we may be sweet schools and not know it. One of the ways to to find out if you are a G Suite school or not would be to go to um, 
classroom, the easiest way is to go to classroom.google.com. And if I jump into another browser, I'll show you how, it, how this works. If I jump into my personal account, if I go to classroom.google.com, if I get this message that's telling me I can't use this because it's not a classroom it's not a classroom account I'm not the G Suite school so this is giving me this is my personal account and this is what you would see if you tried to go in under an account that was not a G Suite for education you would get a screen that looked like this so you you know then if you took your school email address under your school email address login and you logged in to class, try to go to classroom.google.com, you would get this screen. If you were a G Suite school, you would get a sign-in screen. There will be a sign-in button here right around where my, where my uh, image is that says sign out. Okay, so let me close that. That's my personal. We don't need to see that one anymore. And um, when we get down into the second, the second question here, which was uh, how, how many of us are using Classroom? Uh, we're looking at 26% of us that are, are using it on a consistent basis. Uh, 33 are just transitioning or just moving to it. 38% uh, uh, are unfamiliar with it, and 2.4% and uh, are not familiar or not have not are using something that is similar. Could be maybe Classroom. Uh, could be maybe uh, um, Schoology. Could be a Modo. Uh, we would look at those being uh, something and. I know that the grade schools, most of the grade schools are using MSP, uh, and you would be looking at that as, as taking over some of the some of the work. But you're going to find that what we want to do in classroom is um, has different components, uh, especially dealing with the collaboration piece. And collaboration is really what this uh, this product is is able and what this tool is able to give us the collaboration between student to student and student to teacher. So um, classroom works where we can generate we can generate uh, information and to the, we can push it to the students and the students can push it to us. So it works it works both ways. And one thing it one thing it, it doesn't have that say um, uh, Schoology has and, and and not Schoology rather Edmodo has is a blogging feature. Um, we we don't have an ability to chat between or a blog uh, say uh, separately. But one of the things that I would like to, to discuss with you this evening is how we can use and start to use uh, Classroom as a personal as a personal blog uh, within your own Google Classroom, where your students can have a personal blog and start to write uh, for a broader audience uh, more so than they just writing for you. Where it's they, when they completing their work, it's just you and the student that are seeing it. So we want to get them into the getting them into uh, writing uh, and being creative for a, a broader audience, starting with your class and then moving out from moving outward from there. Have a list of resources here for you. Um, Alice Keeler, I think, is one of the top uh, classroom resources that we could pick. Uh, some of her her work is uh, she has she does extensions uh, she does uh, some templates that she has that you're able to use and grab and everything that she gives you is free uh, and she has some pieces that um, have some scripts that she uses for add-ons and they can be a little uh, a little bit complex uh, to work with uh, a little bit tricky so um, when we talk about the tonight we're going to talk about rubrics I am not going to talk about Alex Keeler's rubric, you can go back and look at it on her site. Um, for me, I thought uh, her her rubric setup is a little too uh, too difficult uh, for the for where we are right now. Because if we want to go more teaching, less teching, which is what I'm looking for, what Google's looking for, um, the Keeler the Keeler rubric, however nice it may be, is a little complex in the setup. So I am going to say it's there if you want to go look at it. Um, it's in her. It's, you can find it on her site. But and if you went to her site and just searched for rubrics, and the link that I'm giving you is all of her classroom rubrics uh, that you will have that she has here. And if we click on this, this takes us to her rubric, her classroom site, and these are all of her classroom links here. You can see there's tons of them, and I 
I'm going to leave that to you uh, to to see if you you know you like her, you like the rubric piece. It was one of the questions that came about this evening for this evening has to do with grading and using rubrics. So I am going to talk about that, uh, but I again I will not uh, delve into Alice Keeler's uh, rubric. However, I do like much. I like her products. I'm, uh, the like her her creations. Uh, the rubric is one that I would like to stay away from this evening. I think Pinterest is a great resource for us for for uh, uh, getting ideas and 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 getting getting ideas not just a, a shot in the dark, but we're getting ideas from people that have the same interests as us. We're looking at boards that are teacher created, uh, boards that are dealing with a specific topic, and here I'm looking at just boards that are, looking at boards that are primarily Google Classroom. Google Classroom boards, and you don't need to have a Pinterest account to look at these. You could open them up, you could click on the links, and you could visit uh, whichever and, and whatever links you would choose, and then go out to the sites themselves. So I think Pinterest is a, is a, it's not something that we we see a lot of uh, oftentimes at, and uh, in presentations and in um, uh, say at, at an Ed Camp or at a at, at the uh, ISD or or Pete and C. Uh, but it's something that I think has a lot of value. Uh, has a lot of value in it, and there are some really nice resources. So I would say take a look at that and look around. You may find other things besides uh, classroom that you would like to take a look at. Okay, and let's see. Now I want to back bounce back. The Google Plus communities uh, are excellent resources for for you if you haven't explored them yet. Uh, the Google Classroom, uh, Google Plus community is a, is a great resource for uh, teachers. You have questions, this is where to go. You know that you're going to be talking to teachers here, uh, people that are using Google Classroom. This community has 85,600 85, people in it. Okay, there are 85,600 people, primarily educators like you and me. So uh, you ask your questions in here, uh, chances are somebody's going to have an answer for you rather quickly. Since it's, it is on Google+, Plus, it's 24-7. It is daytime somewhere. Uh, so whenever you post something in, in here, uh, you're going to get responses, and you're going to get responses rather quickly. So uh, Google, uh, Google Classroom and Google, Google Communities are one of my go-to places uh, for getting help. Another Google uh, community here, plus community here, is Google Classroom for Educators. And uh, once you get in there and start looking around, you'll see that there are uh, there are, s are several other communities that may also suit your needs. Okay, now to get to the questions, uh, these are some of the questions that came about uh, from uh, your your questions that were put into the Google form. We wanted to uh, take a look at using, uh, some of us have questions about using rubrics and how uh, we can how, can, how can we grade assignments uh, uh, quicker, get them back to the students quicker, do a more efficient job of uh, getting the students their work, uh, returning their work, and in using Google Classroom, we can do this and save a couple of trees in the process. Uh, we will be using, you're working more in a paperless in, uh, environment. Now, is paperless the answer for everything? I, I say probably not. Um, is paperless something we can shoot for to, 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 make, to do some of the things that we were doing before by using the copier and then handing out sheets and now doing these things and having the students do the writing uh, online and grading it online. I think this is something that will make our workflow easier. I know that I've, I've worked with teachers in the past that we would see them walking around with like milk crates full of papers and copy books and uh, folders and, and moving them around on a cart and, and actually have like uh, shopping bags full of things that they're grading. Um, here, if you're using Google Classroom, we'll see we can we can move from space to space as long as we have a computer and something that has internet access. We're going to be able to do our job. Uh, so we can grade papers when we're when you know, on an iPad. We can grade papers on a Chromebook. We can grade papers on a Mac. I'm using a Mac this evening um, so that I can switch back and forth seamlessly between the accounts that I you know may need to show. But normally, I'm working on a Chromebook. Um, and I have I use two mostly. I have uh, Samsung uh, that I have now that's about six years old, and I use that. I have that in school. I take that 
from classroom to classroom with me um, when I'm working with the students because it's lightweight and, and small. And then I have a larger 14-inch uh, HP uh, that I use at home, and that is pretty much that's my computer that I use at the house. So um, the the work that needs to get done can get done on pretty much any device, uh, and that will make your life, I think, makes your life a little easier. Okay. The um, The rubrics, in, in looking at rubrics, uh, we would like to have something that would be easy to work with, uh, easy to uh, integrate into our, uh, our, our classroom, and also hopefully not have to recreate it. So uh, before we look at rubrics, because I have some rubrics built into uh, our Google Classroom, and I'm going to... Um, just answer some, go over some of these other pieces here, um, where we will look at creating assignments and sharing files in Google and Google Classroom, what it's what it is and what it's not, and talk about how it can be used in other areas. And then we're going to dive into Google Classroom. And I have a Google Classroom created uh, that is um, for the Archdiocese, uh, for the AOP Tech. Uh, this was something that Bill had suggested to me that we use, uh, and so that we could have a class that is. Uh, comprised of me as the teacher, uh, Bill, Alyssa, and Aaron as the students in the class. There are some assignments and we'll see what pieces that we could, we're able to put into Google Classroom uh, and build the classroom as the time, as time goes on. So these anything here, we understand anything that is blue here and underlined is, is a link. So we will take a look. We will come back to this orange slice piece uh, at a uh, at a later time within this uh, within this evening, so that I could show you how to, when we look at it, how we build the actual uh, uh, the actual build the actual rubrics or use the rubrics that we've already have. And um, I've given a, I've given you links on how to create assignments and how how to I'm taking most most of it coming from the Google site. Uh, which gives us step-by-step -step instructions so that if you want to see how to how to build an, and post and share an assignment, you come back to this link and it gives us the step-by-step -step instructions on what you as a teacher would need to do. And then at the top of the pages in Google, we also have the students' work. So if if we are doing this work down here for to get our assignments posted, and we want to let the students how no, to know how they can do it, then we need to take them and show them the student students link here, and this would give us the student information. This is what a student's going to do with the assignment. So Google has done a nice job of giving us both the student and the teacher side, and you as teachers uh, will be. Uh, able to show your students what they need to do and, and how they need to do it in the, using the particular tools that are available. And they'll catch on rather quickly. And uh, what you see, I, I know like I am, we all know I'm in the high school, um, so our, uh, we had a big push this year for Google, for Google Classroom. And um, we're trying to use it across the board with our guys. Um, we are all boys, and we're trying to use it across the board in all classes uh, so that the students are able to see all of their work in one place. So it helps them keep, it helps them stay organized as well. So that it's another one of the benefits of using uh, Google Classroom and uh, using Google Tools. And this here, um, that gives us the different, whatever our devices are. It has whether we have, we're using a computer, and the computer will be a, a, a computer or a Mac, uh, our Androids devices, and then also uh, the iPhone or the iPad. Because now we have ways of using the iPhone and the iPad using the Google Classroom uh, app, and we can mark up assignments and turn in assignments now uh, with handwriting notes that we could put on a Google, on a Google assignment uh, inside the Google Classroom app. So it's pretty neat now the, how this has developed. Um, Google Classroom, there's a link here for Google Classroom, is it an LMS or not? Uh, Google Classroom is, uh, I would like to think of it as uh, not a learning management system, but as a Google Drive management system. It does an excellent job of organizing your Google Drive, organizing your students' Google Drive, and handling the collaboration and the sharing between the two of you. Uh, it's not. It doesn't have a uh, full-blown gradebook. It does not have a um, an attendance uh, component like you would find in, say, Schoology or in Moto or uh, MSP. 
uh, but it does have it does handle the sharing of the files between the teacher and the student extremely well and and the organization piece as well uh, it it does a great job of creating folders for you to maintain your work so that uh, and and house your work so that when you go back you're not looking around your drive trying to find find something everything is pretty much in, a, in an organized place for you with names that you have uh, you have chosen okay um, <clears throat> excuse me I'm saying here that that Google Google Classroom is not just for classroom teachers because I know that we have some we have some principals in the group and I, I'm I know I saw some principals in the uh, in the in the the uh, the, the responses in our registrations uh, we have counselors uh, we have uh, some of our our specials uh, and maybe you have club moderators or uh, or proctors these are things that these are are, are other people within the school that can use a Google Classroom, um, you can have a Google Classroom for uh, principals. I've, I've worked with principals to put together Google Classrooms uh, for their faculty to help them flip their faculty meetings so that they're posting their information in the Google Classroom rather than posting their and having these having monthly meetings uh, to just to get information out there, but to have a better use of the time, use use Google Classroom to get information out on a regular basis. Again, it saves it saves the the uh, the it saves paper. We're not running to the copy. We're not stuffing our mailboxes, and the information is available to us 24/7. Uh, and you're not going to lose this stuff because you have digital copies. Everything is stored. Everything is stored online for us. Uh, there were a couple people that asked uh, for different lesson plans. Um, I've provided a couple of links here for us uh, to look at lesson plans. The one of the uh, lesson, one of the links deals specifically with search, uh, with uh, handling searches on uh, both a on the on all levels, a, a beginner, and intermediate, and advanced level. Uh, so that I think of using the Google search is one of the uh, most important tools that we need to teach our students, uh, so that they can search wisely and uh, search efficiently. And uh, that Google search, the Google search lesson plans that we have there, I think will help some of the people who have uh, looked for or were looking for some plans on things to do. And this is works across the board, any discipline uh, it will work with. Okay. And um, this last piece, I want to hold off on because that's going to be our that's going to be our next slide. I'd like to jump into the classroom, if I may. Let me get back here. And this is the Google Classroom that we've created now. Um, the Google Classroom has three components. You have, as a teacher, you have the stream, which is your main page where you're going to post your information. You have a student page, which is where it lists the students that are in the class. And you can see here, Bill, Alyssa, and Aaron are in the class. And within this, within this. Uh, page here I can select if I want to email Bill and we know that we want to keep our emails within the di you know in the diocese we want to make sure that we're using our school emails so you have to have a school email to be registered in Google Classroom so that I know that any communication that I put out through Google Classroom is going to go through a school authorized account and that's very important that it's not going to any personal email account it is going to a school authorized account so here if I click on Bill's uh, Bill's name here, I get an action and ask him, tell me here that I can either remove him, I can email him, or if I wanted to, I could mute him. Now, does mute come in handy? Yeah, yeah, it does. It, it does when we're when we're having discussions and somebody says something that is uh, maybe inappropriate, uh, then we can and mute them uh, until we have a chance to address that teachable moment. Uh, we can. Um, it's a way of getting the students' attention. They, no, nobody knows they're muted. Um, other students won't know they're muted, uh, but when the, that that student doesn't see their stuff coming up in the stream, uh, we'll know something is happening. But it's a way of two we can get their attention. So uh, we can invite students into the class. There are ways that we can invite students into the class are we can invite them via email, or we can invite them using this code that is here on the on the side here, this class code. So we can invite the students. If I click on invite students, it will bring me into my uh, my contacts, and I could email through my contact list. Okay, or I can assign this. I could give them this class code, and this is probably the easiest way to do it is with the class code. Is you put the class code on the board, uh, or you put it on your school on your uh, 
on your uh, smart board and you, and you have them go to classroom.google.com and then when they are going to classroom.google.com at the, on the main screen their main screen is going to look like this and they'll have a plus sign here and when they click on the plus sign they're going to have the option to either join or create they're going to have the option to join a class they're not going to have the option to create a class because they're not teachers teachers have the two options you can join a class or you can create a class so as a teacher you can be a, a student in another teacher's class or you can you can create your own classes also as a teacher uh, you can be a teacher in another teacher's class so if I go in and look at the about page here it says here invite teachers so I can invite teachers in to uh, to my class so that they can co-teach they can co-teach with me uh, if we look at uh, like the uh, one that I use for our faculty in our faculty uh, in our faculty page our faculty class uh, classroom um, our my principal father Dalton is 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 a teacher in that uh, our vice principals, uh, our assistant principals for academics, uh, Mr. Bob Lock, uh, Dr. Lock, Dr. Lockwood. He is a, a, a teacher in that class as well. Um, so that this way, if they have teacher access, they can post. Um, they can post more than just a, a comment. They can, or more, they can, they can create assignments. They can create discussions. They can do everything that I could do within the class. Uh, another way of using it is that. Um, Teachers will invite me in to be co-teachers in their class, so that I could see them and see what they're doing, so that I could help I could help them uh, shape their lessons and see what their students are doing and see how I could work with them. So I'm sort of uh, I'm a, a, like a mentor, a teacher, a visiting their class, but I'm visiting their class class virtually. I don't need to be there. I don't need to go to the classroom and, and sit with this teacher. I could see what's going on in the class by visiting their Google Classroom. So that's a nice piece too. It's a nice that's nice for um, teachers that are working um, multiple. Uh, if you have a, say a three second grades, uh, or you know you have two sixth grades, and you want to the teachers to be on the same page, they can create their assignments and things together uh, using the Google Classroom, and they could they can see what's going on in each of the two classrooms. And, so it's very nice. It's a nice, a nice feature that, uh, and that was not there originally. That came in last year in 2016 that they gave us the ability to invite teachers into our classroom. Okay. The, um, the again the three pieces: the stream, which is our main page, and this works similar. The stream works similar to Facebook. If you're familiar with Facebook, your most recent posts are at the top, and then they move down. So as you go through the year, things are going to get pushed down. Uh, through the page, they'll get pushed down towards the bottom, and then uh, it becomes a little hard to find things. So uh, in the in the uh, fall of 2016, uh, what came out were uh, the uh, ability the ability to add topics to our classroom, uh, to our classroom assignments or discussions or whatever. So we can add a topic when we create something. We can add a topic, and then we can sort by these topics that we have. So if, if I want to see only the, the the posts that deal with Google Docs, then I would click on Docs and I would see only those posts. And this is, says no post here because I have I have this, but my post is hidden. So because I have not published it yet, so it's not going. It will not show it. It will not show it within my stream. Google allows and gives us the ability to uh, add content ahead of time. So that we don't have to have everything populated in the post. You know, sometimes we don't want the students to see everything that we're everything at the same time, or everything. Or we don't want to see assignments early. So we can create the assignments and then save them. Like you see up here, where it says I have three saved posts. So if I look at these three saved posts, I can say that this one, uh, this one here, is scheduled to be published uh, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. So at nine o'clock tomorrow morning in this classroom, this moonshot, this moonshot lesson that I have here, this uh, video and these questions will become available for this class at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. I could change that, and it's telling my due date here it says it's due tomorrow night at ten. So if I if I choose to to schedule a post 
it will stay hidden until the time that it is to be published, until I chose it to be, um, to be uh, pushed out to the students. It will then appear in the student's stream. This is also listing the due date as being tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So that means anything that the students were to do after 10 o'clock tomorrow night would be marked as late. So it's not you trying to figure out when did it come in. Everything is time date stamped. So if they're doing something and it's after 10 o'clock at night tomorrow, this is it will accept it, but it's going to accept it late. It's not just going to shut it down and say they can't do it. It will accept it, but it accepts it and it marks it as late. Okay, that's, that's an important piece for us to see. So um, if we are using Google Forms at, for an assignment, we can turn the form off at a certain time so that if I were to say at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, if this were a form and I said at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, I don't want any more form, uh, form responses, then at 10 o'clock that form would shut down and it wouldn't accept anything. This is not the case with an assignment like this uh, in classroom. It will accept it, and, and this and it will accept it up until 10 o'clock. And this is a this is, here is a, a discussion that we're looking at. So let me get back out of here. I'm going to close this now. This question. So that's what's going to happen. That's going to come out at 10 o'clock. That's going to come out at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I have here a couple of assignments that Bill and uh, Alyssa and Aaron are going to do, and I've created them ahead of time, but I didn't put them in the stream. And I, I didn't put them in the stream because I think, you know, um, you know, maybe um, maybe Aaron would like to get a jump on the assignment. So if I put this out early, Aaron's Aaron will do his assignment. Um, and and he'll try to get it done and you know he'll, he'll try to get it done first but I may have more instructions that are going to follow so if I just post it up there and he doesn't have all the information he may not do as well with the assignment but if I if if he I wait until I'm ready to push it out and then I open this assignment here and now when I look in the assignment this assignment says that it's going to this class. If I have multiple classes, which I do, I could post it to more than one class at the same time. And this is this is something that was leading in on one of the slides that we had. I don't have to post to all the students at the same time. I could post I and mean, I could individualize the assignment and only send it to certain students. This is absolutely new. This just came out last week. So if we're doing group work, and if I only if I wanted Alyssa and Aaron to do the assignment and not Bill, then I would uncheck this and just send it out to Alyssa and Aaron, and only these two would get the assignment. And and if I wanted to, I could say that if I change this instead of them each getting a copy of it, I leave it this way, and I change this now to students can edit the file. Aaron and Alyssa will have access to the file. Bill will not. So then Aaron and Alyssa, if they're working on a group as a group, they can work on that project. They can work on that file together. And then I could have another another file, and I could give that to another set of students. So if I wanted it to go to Bill, if I wanted the next assignment, say, to go to Bill and Alyssa, then I would do the same thing, and I would pick Bill and Alyssa here and not pick Aaron. But if we're sending it out to everybody as a, as a class assignment, it, this would stay as all students. This is where we put our instructions, and you'll notice I have a, a file name here with a number so that it helps me stay organized and helps organize the drive so that I know that, for me, two means second semester. Uh, 01 would be the first assignment in the second semester, and then it will be 202 and 203 and so on. Uh, a, a brief description. I want this assignment due today. Its topic is Google Docs. I picked that, and if I didn't have a topic, I could add a topic, create a topic here. And then I can attach a Google Drive file. So I attached a Google Drive file. You see here, I can I can uh, put a a file from my computer. I can use a Google Drive file. I could insert a YouTube file, or I could create a link, uh, insert a link to something else on the a link, a link maybe to a file, or something stored on the internet. If I click on this drive, it takes me to my drive and then I could pull work from my drive and pull it into the assignment. So the work that I have, these are this is like my master file. So this is my master and when I'm giving it to them, I'm making a copy for each. I'm not running down to the copier 
I'm not, I don't have to worry about, you know, did I have, uh, did I make 26 copies or did I make 28 copies? You know, am I too short or do I have enough for everybody? I don't have to worry about that here because Google's going to take care of making a copy for everybody. Okay, and then I would, I can assign it, I can schedule it, or I can save it as a draft, and again, in saving it as a draft, it would, I could push it out later after I add more content to it. But I'm going to assign this one here now. I'm going to make a copy for each of them, so every Bill, uh, Alyssa, and Aaron are going to get a copy of this. And then what I want to ask is as we go through this, they're going to be able to show us that we could kill my screen and they can show you their screens and they can see what it looks like on their screen. And I will show you what their work looks like on my screen. So I will, uh, you'll see with the student side by looking at their screen. You'll see the teacher side by looking at my screen. Um, and I think this is a good place for me to, uh, to stop and see if we have any questions. And uh, while that's pushing the assignment out to everybody, uh, to the three of you guys, uh, we can field any questions that we may have uh, coming from the group. Great, excellent, thanks, Gene. Um, just a reminder okay. that if you would like to ask a, a private question, you have the ability to be able to do that in the chat window. Um, but now, if you wanna ask a question directly to Gene, uh, again, you have the opportunity to be able to raise your hand. Uh, it should be on your control panel over on the left on the little um, uh, navigation bar that pops out on the left-hand side right on the bottom there. Um, just press that, I will take a look. Um, to identify you and then come over and give you control of the mic. Um, while we wait to see if anybody has any questions, uh, Alyssa, um, anything popping up in the question window? Hi, we were, we've been pretty quiet on the question window because I think Gene's doing such a great job addressing everybody's um, questions here that we do have some folks who are populating now during this question period know that your text uh, your typed questions can be asked at any time um, so these are just popping in as we uh, take a look here so I'm, I'm looking and speaking at the same time here um, so I'm going to throw this question out there when you create an assignment and attach a Google Doc can students write on the document to answer questions or just viewing so, uh, Gene, can you talk about some of those permissions? Sure. Okay. If and I'm going to go back to my my uh, my screen here for a second. And when we when we put the assignment, if I'm going to make a new assignment, um, I would I'll, I'll I'll walk through making a new assignment. Then we can see the permissions. Uh, I click on the plus sign down in the lower right hand corner, and I'm going to pick create assignment. When I do that, the assignment window opens up. Again, it tells me what class do I, I'm currently in the AOP Tech class, and I currently have all students selected. If I have here, I'm um, going to say that this is my, um, we'll say my slide, this is going to be my slides for tonight. I'm going to push out my slides for tonight to everybody. And there's no, there's not going to be a due date for this. All right, I could, I'll just leave that one go. And uh, no, I'll tell you, I, I will put a due date on it because I do want to show you the calendar and how that how that comes into play. So I want to go with the 23rd for this one, and we're going to say uh, updates, update slides. Okay, so and we'll go with classroom as our topic. Now, if I choose uh, to attach a file, I will choose a Google Drive file. The Google Drive file that I am attaching is in my Google Drive. It's coming out of my drive, and I'm going to attach this set of slides to it. I'm going to click the Add button, and now I'm going to see here on this in this box, how do I want the students to see this? If I just want the students to see the file and not be able to change it, I would use this Students Can View file, which means there are no the permissions are only to view not change anything they can't change any any of the content and they can't comment on the document if I choose that students can edit the file then that means all students can edit this file if I choose this and push it out everybody who is in the class can edit the file that becomes a hot mess uh, when you do that because if if you unless you're doing an assignment where you have a spreadsheet and you want them to each type on a different line uh, if you get um, you know 10 or 12 people or 15 people typing into the document at the same time it becomes extremely hectic uh, I know when I go out and I'm doing if I'm doing training and I show teachers something like this that I will show them this as the way not to do it 
because they, they get so frustrated trying to find where they are within the document. And then I said, okay, fine. Now, as a student, how would you feel if this happened? So when we were working with the, uh, when we were, if we wanted to have students edit the file, if we had two students like I had before where I had Aaron and, and Alyssa editing the file, that's fine. It's only two of them. But if I throw this out to an entire class, if I have a class of 25 or 30, um, it becomes, it, it becomes a, a, a pretty messy. Okay. And the last way, and this is the way we share most of our work with our assignments, is that we make a copy for each student. So if I make a copy for each student, everybody gets a copy of that assignment. Everybody has edit access to that assignment. And because I'm giving it a due date, that means they have to turn it in by that date. So the, the three options, the three uh, permissions are to view, to edit, that's everybody editing, everybody viewing. Make a copy for each student means the teacher, the, the student has access to the file, and the, the teacher has access to the file. Okay. Hope that answered the question. Is that uh, am I am I on with that one, or is there anything else that needs to follow? I think uh, I think we might be good there. Another one that just came into the the chat window that I think would be. Um, something that a lot of folks would want to hear is whether uh, there's an approval feature for comments uh, in Google Classroom. There's some concern about students being able to post and uh -huh. are teachers moderators of that before yes. those go live. Okay. Now, uh, if w when we create the class, we can decide whether we want to give the students comment access. So when we go, when we come into our, into our, our classroom, and we're, when we are putting the class together, we and we are choosing. And let me come back here into. Let me go back into my my main screen of the classes, okay? And I want to edit. Uh, let me come back here. I can set the when I'm putting the class together. I can set whether I want the students to be able to to comment or I want them to be able just be able to uh, to post. Uh, post remarks or not be able so here is this says students on the, this here says students can post and comment if I turn this off this says students can only comment which means they can't create their own posts and then I could say only teachers can post or comment which means students won't have any access to writing or commenting or posting within the page okay um, if we are doing a discussion Okay, if we're looking at doing a discussion, which is where we would be more concerned about what the students are writing because we're asking that now we are asking them to write. If we look at a, at a discussion question here, we create a question. We have the options here. Student, uh, students can reply to each other. Students can, uh, students can, enter, uh, can enter an answer. If we do this, if we say students can reply to each other, then everybody sees everybody else's, everybody else will see everybody else's stuff. This feeds into the uh, into the sheet into the the, the uh, assignment, and the teacher can then mute that uh, uh, mute that. It's not this is not something that we're going to use. Uh, say um, where we're going to leave this open, and uh, students are going to be able to key to it at any time. We use this discussion piece for short um, for some maybe it could be used for something uh, short, maybe an end of your class wrap up, uh, something that we. If we want to have a discussion, we're going to have a discussion with them. We're going to have a discussion in a closed, you know, a closed period of time. Here, uh, it's not something that we would uh, leave open when we are we are not looking at it ourselves. It's not um, like working with uh, a blogger, where uh, say you can um, you can screen all of the results before they before they are published. Uh, or so with this, you're going to see as the stuff comes in, you're going to see it. Uh, but as quick as you could see it, you can also take it. You you can also take it down. Uh, you can also delete the responses. Um, so that is something that there is not the, the mo as far as moderating what's happening. Um, you're not going to you're not going to see uh, those. You don't see those functions. Although p teachers may be you know teachers may be asking for that. And uh, this would be a good time for me to note this this question mark down here in the corner. If we look at this question mark down here in the corner, um, this is our feedback. So if we wanted to see that we have moderate moderate capabilities, then we would come down here and we would say send feedback and then ask in this particular space here, ask about and, and request that they, we have the moderator functions uh, built in. Okay.
Great. And Jean, one more that might be useful for, for sure. the group there. Um, can you describe a little bit of the difference between an assignment versus an announcement? An announcement? And sure. Mm -hmm. common, common, yeah, common question. Okay. Um, in an announcement, an announcement is going to, you can you can you have the same pieces here. You have uh, the attach attach a file, insert a Google Drive file, insert a YouTube video, or insert a link. You have the same pieces. What happens with this is when we if we were to do if I were to attach a file here, if I were to attach the same file in an announcement, you notice I don't get that option of send a copy to each. You know, each student gets a copy. Uh, they can edit, or uh, the, uh, the student can view only. So this is something that is going to be posted into the classroom, and everybody can see it. Uh, in the and there's no due date. There's no uh, due date attached to it. Uh, there's nothing that the students are going to have to turn in. In an assignment, you'll notice this is an assignment here, where it's telling me that um, we have three people in the class, two people have done it, and one person is not. The assignment has, I want to edit this assignment, the assignment has the information, it has the due date, it has the topic like we have in the announcement, but then here, this is where we inserted our file, and this is, this is the piece that was di is different, where it's telling us that they're going to get, when they're going to get this copy, they're going to need to turn that copy in for me to be able to mark it. So uh, assignments have um, assignments are are looking for students to do some work. They're looking for them to take some sort of an act, some sort of action. When I look at this assignment here, this is what I gave. This is what I gave to the students. When I gave to Bill and and Alyssa and Aaron, I gave them this document that just said start typing here. But down the bottom, I had inserted my rubric. And so this was done intentionally so that my rubric is built into the file. And for those of us that are, are looking for how do we use the rubrics, the, the rubric was built into the file here. And I'll, I'm going to go through with you in the last half hour how to do that. Uh, but the main, the main difference is we don't have this piece and we don't have this, this piece in the assignment, uh, in the announcement rather. The announcement is, looks like, the announcement looks like this. So we have an announcement here with the file, which is just going to open up a link. It's going to open up that file and the link, uh, that link rather. And then this one is giving us the option that the students are going to work on it. So every student is going to get a copy of this. Now, um, I'll stop here if there's an, if, there, if there are any more questions, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to pick it up uh, back here uh, after you know after the questions. So I'm going to leave that screen up. I think we're good to go, Gene. Thanks. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're we're looking at just about uh, close to we're close to eight o'clock. So we we have about half an hour to put some more things together. Um, as always, um, I'm going to um, encourage you to uh, go through the slides that I have provided for you uh, this evening. Um, there are more slides than uh, I'm sure I will I will get to, um, and. The information, though, is there for you to uh, peruse at your leisure. And one of the things I would like to to mention is that if you if you took the slides, if you took the slides uh, in the beginning of the presentation, and let me just open this up here, and I want to show you something. Let me go jump over to my other screen. Okay. When I give you this, when I give the slides here, um, you're getting, you're you're getting my uh, the slides, but you're you're getting everything else that goes. You're getting everything else that goes along with it. Okay, so um, I I use the the notes feature. So if you grab the slides, you also grab my my notes that are down the bottom. So my links and things, you'll see them down the bottom here in the slide. So if you grab this presentation, you're going to get this additional this additional work as well. And um, not every slide has notes in the bottom, but some you know some do. And and I think that that's a, something that you know it helps me stay on task as far as when I'm going through the presentations. But for you, it also provides some additional additional information that I did not put on the slide itself, but I use you know we use when we're talking about it. So. Uh, 
I'm going to go back to, if that's it, I would like to go back to the classroom, okay? Um, so if you grab this presentation, again, you're going to get all of this, these other pieces underneath as well. And some of, some of you may not use the notes, but hopefully now if you see it and you, you, know, you see how, how easy it is to work with, you may decide that, hey, this would be something good for me to use with my class. And, and then you could also print them out. So you could print out like slides and, and notes. So you get slides and notes on the same sheet. So it's a good cheat sheet for you when you're doing your presentations. Okay. Uh, I want to stay on track here because we have uh, half an hour and there are, just a, there are a few things that I would like to hit before we, that I think are going to, to, to help you along the way. Okay, so back to classroom. Okay, is that, am I good, Alyssa? Are we good with the questions now? We're good. Okay, all right. So now, um, in, the, uh, in this assignment, that now everyone has everyone has completed. I see I have three done, uh, and there's no uh, there's zero in the not done. So I know that everybody has completed the assignment. When I click on the assignment here, I get a window now that I can see each of the students' work. So this is telling me it it's going to be listed done, and then as I start to uh, if we had students that were done and not done, then the not done's will be on the bottom. So that I, as a teacher, I know specifically, you could look at it and I could see. So if Alyssa didn't do this assignment on, if Alyssa didn't do the assignment on time yet, or if she didn't turn it in yet, she would be down the bottom here in an undone category. So that I would know that I would need to, you know, talk to Alyssa, give her a little prize, what's going, what's happening, you know. But this is something that the students don't see. This is something that I see as the teacher. So it helps me stay on task. So it helps me stay, uh, you know, stay up to date with them, see what they're doing, especially if you're working on something that is a, a rather, uh, rather lengthy. Um, if students, uh, we can see the work as it develops. So as the students are turning, as the students are working on this, right now they're all done. So they turned it in and they're waiting to be graded. So my grading here, if I, if I didn't want this to be 10 points, I could say, you know, instead of, I'd rather 100 points, I could say I want this to be 20, this be worth 20 points, and then I could, get, I could grade them on a scale of 1 to 20, or 0 to 20, when I'm putting in the grades here. And if I open this up, I could see Bill's, I'll see Bill's work. And I'll see that Bill has the rubric, uh, Bill has his assignment, and then down the bottom, he has his, his built-in rubric. So this rubric was built using uh, Orange Slice, which I'm, I'm going to hit briefly with. Um, and one of the things that I would like to talk to you, mention with, with, with Orange Slice and is that you don't need to recreate your rubrics. If you have rubrics already made, whether they're in Word or Excel or Docs or Sheets, you can import, you can copy and paste the information into um, Orange Slice. The only thing that the Orange Slice requires is that the if you're making your rubric that the top right the top left hand corner has this title rubric categories. In order for Orange Slice to work, the rubric categories has to be in this cell. That's how it knows it's an Orange Slice it's an Orange Slice component. And then these are these are your numeric values. And this changed. It was originally just had to be numbers. Now it can be numbers and and letters. So that these could be your category. These can be your uh, your grading uh, standards. And then you have your categories along the side here. Now when we grade, if I were to grade Bill's assignment here, I would say his uh, just showing you here. I, I'm going to say his uh, his uh, Go on the add-ons, and I'm going to say this is the orange slice. I run orange slice, and I, I want to score this now. So when I'm when I'm scoring Bill, uh, Bill's rubric, I say that okay, his uh, sentence fluency is good. Okay, his vocabulary is great. His uh, conventions here, we're going to say are good. His organization is good. And now I process the grade, and what's going to happen is this is going to uh, shade the appropriate sections, and now this is graded, and it gives us down here the point value. So he has 17 points. He's going to get an 80, 85 on this. He would get an 85 if this were 100. If this were 100 percent category, he would get 85. Uh, if we have, we're looking here. We have uh, five. 
uh, five points is our maximum, and we have one, two, three, four, five, so it's 25. So out of 25, Bill got 17, you know, so rather 20 points here, four, cate four categories, 20 and five each, Bill got 20 points out of the, seven out of the, 17 out of the 25, out of the 20, rather. So it does a nice job of, of, of giving them a good graphical view of it, they, I mean, a good, uh, good visual, so that they can see it jumps right out at them. And what's also nice is that they can uh, re, re, um, submit the assignment, and then you, if, he, if Bill makes changes to this and he resubmits it, I can grade it again, and then it will give him another grade down the bottom. So I could regrade this assignment. If I regrade the assignment again, and I, I, he would get it, he would then get, like I said, then get another a second grade. So I would see, you know, if he, you know, what he improved upon. Also, there is a section for comments so that we could add that we could add our own comments as a summary. We could type in information for them as well. But how does this all happen? This is the question. This is the question that some of you have. Most of you have is how does this happen? This looks pretty neat, but how does it how does it come about? So. Back in the slides, and I'm jumping over here to the orange, the orange slice uh, rubric slide. Um, this is a add-on. Orange slice is an add-on for Google Docs. Add-ons are small programs that run inside the specific application. So Orange slice is an add-on for Google Docs. So if you take this this uh, presentation and you click on Orange Slice here, it's going to take you to the web store so that you can install the Orange Slice add-on. Now, I've already installed it, so I have it installed here. If you haven't had it installed, it will say add, and it'll, it'll give you an add to Chrome, and then it'll say free. Uh, and and you'll be able to add it to your add it, it'll add the sheets and then add it to Docs rather. And then when you are inside your document, like we saw here. I'm able to run the add-on by clicking on add-ons and then coming down and clicking on orange slice and that's what makes it fall into this particular into the particular page and I inserted the the the, the rubric before I shared the file with the students so that every student got a copy of the rubric some teachers will put the rubric in afterwards and for me that's too much work uh, if I have 25 students, I have to put the rubric in 25 times. I like putting the rubric in up front so that the rubric is there in the student's file. The student sees it. He knows, he or she knows exactly what you're looking for uh, from a, um, from a, what you're looking for them to be able to produce and at what level. And everybody has the exact same thing. And they can't lose it. They can't lose it. They can't, they can't hold on to the paper hold on to what they've written and lose the rubric. It's all in one file, okay? And it's all in Google Drive. If I go into my classroom in Google Drive, I will see here's my work here, but my work is also in, a, in my Google Drive file in my classroom. I have a folder created for that. You remember that assignment was called 201. Here's the 201 folder and inside the 201 folder is their work and here's here are their, their here's their raw work and then here's the graded assignment from Bill the one that I graded so if I look at it, if when I when I look at it here I see that I have their work and, and I can when I open this up you notice that Bill's changed the graded so that we know automatically I can look at it and say I don't need to regrade that one that one when I look at it I could go in and I could grade somebody else's so any if I look at now if I go in and I look at Aaron's if I go into Aaron's work I come back into stream and I go back to the assignment here and I look at Aaron's work now Aaron's rubric will be blank okay Aaron Aaron's he's he's in the he's a expert typist here we can see okay so uh, we go into add-ons now and I run the orange slice rubric again for him it will populate on the side and you can see up top here where Aaron is in the file Aaron's in the file while I'm grading it okay um, so we see and we see because we see him up here in the corner okay and if I go ahead and I grade if I grade Aaron if I say five and then four and then five 
and then five. Okay, and I, if I want to add something else, I can add. If I want to adjust the grades, I can. If I want to give them feedback, I can type in. I could put something in here and then give them feedback on the particular categories. And now I process the grade. And when I process Aaron's grade, now Aaron's again falls down the bottom. Aaron has 19 out of 20 points, so he has a 95. If Aaron is in this, if Aaron is in here too. I can also uh, click up here in the chat, and now the chat window opens up, and I could say, and I could ask him, say, so I could ask him if he has any questions now. So here I could ask him if he has any questions about his grade because he sees the grade now. It's there for him. It's there for him if he's in the file. Now he's popped out. Now he's popping back in again. Okay. He left and now he's back. And you can see it here. And now he's, he's typing. So I can have this conversation with him. So if we're in a lab setting or if you're in a, if you are in a, uh, <laughs> Uh, don't you love that? Now you're going to start to debate the grade. Oh my! Uh, we, there's one in every crowd, folks. We know it. Uh, the um, the, um, the if you're using this in the classroom, your students are sitting or they're in a the lab. They're sitting at their workstations. Um, if you have uh, you have a, if you have a Chromebook and you're walking around the room with it, or or your laptop, um, you can be. You could be standing and talking to one student, but you can be looking at somebody else's work too at the same time. Or um, one of the ways I used this was when I was teaching accounting, I would use this as a way of, of having office hours at night so that I would meet my guys in here and be able to work with them at night for half an hour and going over their accounting problems from the day, uh, answering any questions they may have in this setting. Uh, so it's like a, having a one-on-one -on -one tutor with them. So uh, that's uh, that is the chat feature. That was that's a bonus. I was looking wasn't looking for that one tonight, but there it is. Okay, um, coming back into classroom. The uh, I want to come back. Just jump over here again to the uh, yeah. I want to go back to the slides. And I want to mention something. Um, and this will be in my. Uh, in the in the notes, I have a, in here a couple of videos for you, and when you'll notice if you play when you play the videos, the videos will play full screen without ads. So uh, what I did here was I'm giving you um, down in the you notice I have that little bonus button there. Okay, um, I'm telling you here that uh, I'm using this EdTech Hero uh, YouTube Fulfill. I'm using this uh, this uh, extension to create the videos, to, to put the videos, get a link for the video that will show full screen with no ads. So you don't have to worry about you know taking something from YouTube and the kids seeing something that's inappropriate. Um, so that's a that's a nice uh, ad, that's a nice extension. It's called YouTube uh, Fulfill. You could grab the link right here from the presentation. It will again it will take you out to the uh, take you out to the web store. And then it will install the, install the extension for you. And the way it works is that um, we install this. Mine says add to Chrome already, but once you install it, this is it right here. So if I went to YouTube and I grab the YouTube, I grab any YouTube video. If I'm on the YouTube site and the video, I click on this extension, EdTech Hero. It gives me a new link. If I copy and paste that link into an assignment or whatever, if, but if I preview it, the YouTube video looks like this. So it plays full screen, no uh, no uh, no ads, no comments, um, no annotations. So I like that. I figured I'd show you that one. That's that's something good. Good classroom. You can get good classroom use out of that one, especially if you're you know you're worried about what's going to you know what you're going to see in the you know in the YouTube uh, in the uh, YouTube video, where you know sometimes we watch a YouTube video and it looks great, and then we watch the same video two hours later, and there's a comment in there that would be we would consider inappropriate. Okay, uh, so I have two videos here. This is a YouTube video for Orange Slice, and um, the 
how it can help your workflow and then how to uh, how to use the, the teacher tool okay uh, the the other thing that I would like to uh, Another thing, piece I would like to take a look at here, within within the uh, presentation. Let me jump back. Um, self grading quizzes. Um, Google has uh, has the ability to create self grading quizzes. If, if we have not used uh, the quiz function, um, Google now has uh, the ability to create the quizzes, shuffle the order of the questions, um, but also we can insert the quiz, the quiz, the Google form, into a Google Classroom assignment. So the the assignment will be graded when the assignment uh, when the student takes the quiz online. It marks it as turned in, but then it self grades it and then puts it into a spreadsheet so that you can see the grade for the for the students. So um, the that's a new feature that came in uh, the. The, the self-grading piece uh, came in um, last quarter. Uh, it has. I still use. I do have the link here to Fluguru because I like Fluguru and I like. I like that it has. Right now, it has more options than Google Forms. But for those of us just starting out, uh, Google Forms. This version, the, the Google Forms version of, um, is fine for uh, for creating self-grading quizzes for your students or exit tickets, and. Also, as I mentioned, you can insert it into a Google Classroom, into a Google Classroom assignment, which is, I think, an excellent idea for us to be able to um, to have our students in one place where they don't have to look for things outside of Google Classroom. As we are working, we don't want the disruptions of having students move from window to window and have to type in addresses. So, if we make if we make our classes more clickable. So that we can keep the students inside the browser and working within this controlled space, then uh, they are less apt to get sidetracked. Uh, it helps uh, with classroom management. We all know what it's like to have a student type in a URL. Um, you know, it, it's it's you know everything breaks loose when when we ask them to type in something into the browser because no two students are going to type that URL the same way so if we start if we make our classroom more clickable by inserting these insert, inserting these options into Google Classroom it helps for a smoother workflow and again smooth workflow is what I'm looking for is what I'm trying to help you where I'm trying to to help you the the place I'm trying to get you so that again you save more time less stress less aggravation okay uh, I'm I'm listening for you here um, just want to, I'm going to go through some of the last slides. Uh, these are links uh, for you uh, to take a look at that will help you with your, uh, you know, learn more about Google Classroom. Uh, this one here is one that I've, this is a, a link, a sheet document that I've put together um, came from another trainer. The trainer had it, but she didn't have the links in. So what I did was I went back in, but she she did an agenda of this is what she wanted to cover. So I went back in and said this is what we could cover. But I made all of these clickable again, clickable, so that if I want to see if I want to show a student how to open an assignment, then all they have to do is to click on this open an assignment, and it will take them to the instructions on how to open an assignment. So it's something that I I I like the clickable features. So I don't like having students have to type things. It's for me. It's a waste. It wastes too much time uh, in the classroom, and and they get frustrated. You get frustrated because you're going around jumping from station to station with them. Uh, so I think again, clickable classroom, much better. Okay. Um, these links that I'm, I've given you here, please take a look at those. Uh, in the, you know, in the, re, you know, in the not too distant future, so that things will stay fresh for you. Uh, this uh, is a looks like a, a uh, sort of like a Jeopardy board, uh, but it's it is a slide presentation. It's an interactive slide presentation, so you could click on different options here. And if I, if you wanted to see how to post an assignment from Drive, you can click on this. It will jump you. Um, it will jump us out to now instructions on uh, visual instructions on how to post the assignment. So you could follow through and see um, and see this, and it'll take you through step by step in a visual fashion. And you can 
uh, go back. This is sort of like, like I said, it looks like a uh, it looks like a Jeopardy board, and you will be able to go in and you will be able to uh, choose any of these options to see uh, the different ways, the different tutorials on these particular topics. Uh, one last uh, one last thing uh, that I would uh, would leave you with is let me jump out of here. Okay, um, there are Google partners now where, where Google Classroom partners are, are sites that integrate with Google Classroom, like Edpuzzle, um, where you can, um, you can use uh, the Ed, you can insert Edpuzzle assignments using your Google Classroom roster. So uh, Edpuzzle, Quizlet, uh, these are sites that use your, class, your Google Classroom roster to assign work to students. So um, the, this is nice, again, it's clickable so that you're keeping the students contained in what you're doing, not having them, okay, open up this site, open up, open up your Edpuzzle site, then put in your login. Everything is connected to their Google login and everything is connected to Google Classroom. So it's a nice, again, a nice way of streamlining the workflow, keeping them moving, keeping them going on, and and uh, having the work, uh, having them work more efficiently, and having you work more efficiently. Uh, there's a link here to Simple K12. Simple K12 is a, a site that has um, webinars similar to this, but they are pre -re some of them are pre-recorded, some are offered on Saturdays live. Um, you can view them. Uh, here uh, for for free, uh, you don't. Uh, you can go into. Uh, you can create yourself an account so you can get trans. You know, print transcripts uh, for yourself, and um, you can print transcripts of those uh, previously uh, aired webinars. So there are thousands of webinars out there. I believe that, uh, like, a, I know there's over a thousand webinars that you could see uh, on different topics. And right now we're focusing on Google and Google Classroom. So you could find and you could look at those uh, that previous that deal with Google. So I've I have here a link to Google Tools catalog so that you can see these are the these are the the Google video, the Google webinars that I am saying that you know these probably would help you if you were to take these day half and they're half an hour, half an hour in length, uh, and then there's a question and answer period, and you get to see the you will get to get to watch the watch the archive of the webinar and then also listen to the questions that were asked at the end of the webinar. So it's a great way of continuing the learning as you as you go on. One thing that I would I would ask you to do uh, for my you know for for my purposes is uh, I am very big on uh, reflection and taking a look at what you know uh, what type of what type of uh, job I did and how you know how I could get better. Uh, so I'm going to ask if you could you know visit this uh, slide, the last slide in the presentation, and click on that link. That link will take you to a form, a Google form, and when you complete the form, it will then email you a copy, uh, a co certificate of attendance, uh, personalized for you, a uh, PDF file, and if you know you want to bring it back to your principal or you want to hang it on your refrigerator, <laughs> choice is yours, uh, show it to the kids, uh, let them know, uh, it's a good way of modeling uh, for them, you know, they can see that you're doing something too, you're not just the teacher, but you're also a student, and they know that you are continuing to learn, and you're learning so that their learning can be better. Okay, and that's about where I'm going to stop. Um, if there are any questions uh, right now, we, we still have a few minutes. Uh, I will be able to field those. Be happy to field those questions for you. Uh, so I'll, I'll give it back to Alyssa. Uh, question window wise, just to, uh, I just want to make note that we've had a lot of uh, people. Um, give some great feedback and excitement about using um, the um, orange slice add-on oh, there. It's a great add-on. Uh, so is. people it's so are easy excited. To use. Yeah, and so easy to use. It, it's it's uh, uh, as you as you see, uh, it's easy to um, to pull in your own rubrics, and uh, you know, if people want to hang, I can show you. I could I could throw one of those in to to see how quickly it pull how quickly it pulls in a, a rubric, uh, a previously uh, created rubric into into what you have, or how how quickly you can create your own. 
great. Um, and I, I think there's going to be a lot of people try, trying that out tomorrow. So that's always oh, that's great. I'm glad to hear that because I, you know if we, we we spend so much time grading, um, and um, if we are using this and it's built into there, it's built into the document. Uh, you know, we we have again, we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about misplacing anything. And the grades are recorded for us. You know, we can copy them into our grade book, put them into MSP, whatever it is we need to do. Also, I didn't mention this, but your grades in uh, Google Classroom are downloadable so that you can download the grades for an assignment. If you need a hard copy, you can download the grades and then uh, insert, put them into your MSP or whatever it is that you're using for your grade book. Great. Um, and I do want to remind that everyone who's on the, the webinar tonight, you will receive a follow-up email, and I'm sure Bill will, will mention it too, in, in about this time tomorrow that we'll have all of the, the presentation links again. I'm going to throw uh, the link to Gene's slide once again in the, in the chat window because it might have scrolled down to the, uh, it might be at the very top for you. Uh, so I'm putting the that link back in the chat window and you'll also get a follow-up email uh, tomorrow with those uh, in there as well as the archive and they're, they're free for you to, to utilize and, and share with your, your colleagues as we all make an effort to try out these new tools. Well, Gene, Gene, thanks very much. Uh, I'm going to take the Good. presentation over for one second um, sure. just to formally close our uh, close this out. And then, um, you know, if anybody does want to um, does want to stick around, you can show the orange slice real quick. But um, mm -hmm. just a couple of announcements. Certainly, I appreciate everyone's attendance. It's great to see the number of attendees that we have had this evening. Um, just a reminder, you know, certainly always follow us across uh, the social media platforms. Um, feel free to join us on Remind if you're using Remind. Um, put in the code AOP Tech. That is our classroom, and we send out typically. Uh, weekly announcements, but you get the heads up of any special announcements that may be coming that we have to pass through the um, the OCE office uh, but, and through your principals uh, to get out to you. Additionally, if any teachers uh, or, te or principals are going to be um, uh, at Pete and C uh, in February, the week of February 12th, um, there is usually a large contingent of uh, archdiocese teachers that are there. Um, we will be, for the second year this year, having an AOP tech gathering, an opportunity um, after the sessions, typically on Tuesday, for, uh, for our teachers to be able to get together, talk, share ideas, best practices, resources, and just to have a, uh, the ability to be able to connect face-to-face. -face. So certainly that information will be shared via Remind and our other social media channels. And as well, um, don't forget that our Egg Camp AOP uh, is going to be Saturday, February 25th, and it is going to be held at Cardinal O'Hara High School, and you can find out uh, more information uh, by visiting the aoptech.weebly.com site, and that will link you over to the EdCamp AOP site for all the in particular information and registration. So, Gene, again, um, thanks for all of your preparation. I am going to um, to stop recording our um, our session now. And Gene, I'm going to flip it back over to you if you okay. want to be able to um, to show any of the orange slice, um, you know, demo that. But sure. uh, so sure. everyone, to all of our attendees, this is the end of the formal piece of the uh, of the webinar, and I'll flip it back over to Gene in one second. So thanks for everyone for your time.